Hey everybody, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. I am Fem. I make knitting and crochet related videos on this channel and I talk about mental well-being and uh, I actually have a community group on Facebook which is completely for free. Uh, you can join below. We are with 150 plus people from all around the world. But today we are talking about scrap projects. And it's actually really fun because I asked in the YouTube community tab what kind of videos you would like to see more of me this year. And I put this in because this is actually a bit what I started with. And you totally wanted to see more of these, which is really fun to me because I really like making these and filming these. And I was, yeah, I didn't know if it was getting too, too many of them, but you love it. So I'm all here for it. <laughs> I'm a little bit under the weather. So I snuggled up under the couch today. I have my blanket that you, we all know from my podcast videos. <laughs> and um, we're just gonna go through it easy. I'm just gonna talk with you like I'm sitting with a friend. I have, I'm a little bit sniffy, sorry about that. Um, my water this time, not tea, a little bit warm. That's new actually, but the, the heater is like next to me. But yeah, I have quite a bit of scrap yarn projects that maybe made a little bit of noise. I want to say I have a little bit of a, a few scrap yarn projects for you. And maybe first go just know, okay, what, what do we count under scrap yarn? I think it can go from like 10 grams of yarn to like a full skein of maybe a certain color, certain type of yarn that you don't uh, know what to do with. So kind of make a whole project with. And it can vary a lot. I think it's also up to you what you think is scrap yarn. But um, yeah, a lot of these projects can be made with like super, a lot of different scrap yarns or a lot of different yarns. They are quite colorful. Um, if you're not into that, all fine, but don't click away yet. <laughs> they are very colorful, but of course you can, you can personalize them completely how you like. So if you are very much of the neutral colors, put a bunch of neutrals together. You can do a lot with it, you know? So let's get into the patterns. Okay, before we completely start into the patterns, I want to uh, say a little bit about uh, choosing scrap yarn projects because I think it can be really easy to just, if you have some yarn laying around that you're not able to use at the moment, just, just make something that you will never use again. You probably are guilty of it too. <laughs> like make a pillow, which could be very cool, but maybe in the colors that you don't love together or just something else. I put quite some uh, garment patterns in here. I think it's about 50-50, but I just want you to be intentional. So for example, there are some patterns probably in here that you might need to buy a little bit more yarn for. But in my opinion, I think it is better to buy maybe a little bit more yarn, if you're able, of course, um, to make a pattern that you will use instead of just making something because you have scrap yarn laying around. And you will never use again, you know, so keep that in mind. Uh, and for the uh, clothing patterns, they are all size inclusive, as always, because I think it's very important while doing these videos and preparing for them. I'm always a bit shocked and sad still that there are so many big designers that do not offer size inclusivity in their patterns. But these are all at least nine sizes, some are even more, like quite a bit more. So I was impressed. Uh, I'll tell you when I talk about the patterns, how many sizes they have. So, you know, at least nine, mostly from an X, uh, X, extra small to a 5XL. But yeah, let's finally go into the patterns. Okay, we are going to start with one that really caught my attention and I love it so much. And it is this one. This is the, I have my laptop down by the way, this sea glass sweater by Wool and Pine. I think it is so, so cool. and. I was thinking, okay, what does it, what makes it so cool? Like there are stripes, but not. It is one by one color work. So what you do is you work two colors, uh, two different colors in one round and you switch them one by one. And that's what gives this cool effect. So I, I really, really love that. This is completely a stash buster project. You can really use, it is DK weight uh, mostly, but you can use other uh, weights of yarn. They explain more in it in their uh, video tutorials also. There are a lot of video tutorials for this pattern, which I think is really cool. It is uh, their video tutorials from Magic Knot, so you don't have all those scra uh, all those scraps, all those ends to weave in, which I think it is important in this one. Uh, tips for stash busting, scrappy matching sleeves which is something we probably wouldn't think about, but I think that is really handy. So you have some matching sleeves. I think that would be nice. Could also not be matching, of course. 
um, color palette tips, uh, color palette tips and inspo, how to customize for a perfect fit, and even more. So this really is a pattern with a lot of value. I really love it. I don't have enough scrubs to make this yet, but this will definitely stay on my mind because I think these are really, really cool. Something extra that you could also do is choose a base color. So um, like when you do the one by one color work, you choose one color that you would use throughout the whole sweater, maybe something more neutral or maybe something if you have a lot of blue scrubs, blue, pink scrub, you can, you can figure it out yourself. Um, important is that you switch the placement of that main color in your next round, otherwise you get vertical stripes, so keep that in mind. That was pattern number one and we will see a little bit more of wool and pine in this video. Okay, let's go into pattern number two, which is not particularly designed to be a scrap yarn project, but I think it could work really well and I also could think I also think it could work very well for advent yarn, actually. So this is the Shift Again by Andrea and Maori. It is a new pattern, or it is a variation of a, a design that she has, I think. It, this is now the cardigan version. It released in January this month. So it is very, very new still. And it is um, knit top-down, using stranded color work. It is seamless, but it is steaked. So if you want to challenge yourself with sticking, I've never done it, but it does scare me a little bit. I think this would be a great pattern to try it out. Uh, this yarn that she uses is actually a spin cycle, but I think because there's a main color and a contrast color, this, the spin cycle is the contrast in this, this case. I think it could be great for a fade uh, from Advents or a fade in your scrap yarn if you have it. I think it could be really cool. Um, if you are able to weave them in nicely together, I think it could work perfect for a scrap or advent kind of yarn. Good to know that this, uh, the weight of the yarn is light sport weight. Then we go on to another cardigan and this is the Deb Cardi by Amanda Kafka. And this is very, really different again. So the shift again is more fitted, this is more flowy, uh, a little bit younger maybe. I think it is really cool. A very different style. This is also really fun because it has different options for sleeves, for body. I think there are three options. Yeah, here, she says in the pattern, uh, you can mix one of three versions of the Cardi and mix and match sections to pick your own length, sleeve style and band texture. You can even make it fully reversible. So that is super cool. Um, also fun is you can really play around with yarn weights. You can even use different kind of yarn weights together. So you can choose, uh, choose for a chunky um, yarn single held. That is, if you want to do a single held yarn, it's chunky weight. So she also says hold fingering double or pair DK weight with a mohair. Everything is possible in this one. So yeah, I really, really think it's so fun. And I love the versatility in the pattern. So you can, if you buy one, this pattern, you have like, how many options is this? A lot of options, a lot of options of patterns, so you can make many more. This is also really cool. So she thought about it, so that is really, really nice. Since we are getting into the, well, it's still winter, but I think I think many of us are already thinking a little bit about the spring season. I put a, quite some teas in here. So um, short sleeves, tops, and this is another one by Wool & Pine. This is the Sea Glass Tea. So as you can see, it is a version of the Sea Glass sweater that we just saw. But I think it's still different enough that I wanted to incorporate it in here. So this is also a uh, in the round top down top and it uses fingering rate uh, stash yarn, leftovers or minis she says in the pattern or in the, the Ravelry page. There are also seven video tutorials again. I think this is so cool. I've never really seen this like that there are so many uh, instruction video with it. So that's really cool. Another thing that they say is you can hold two strands of mohair together to get this look. Uh, also really fun. I think a lot of people have random mohair laying around. When you, when you have a pattern with mohair, you always like to buy a little bit more. Or maybe in general, you probably have some, some skeins uh, more. But mohair, that's what we're talking about. So yeah, I think this is so fun. What I really like is the detail of the... I don't know if it's like raglan or a round yoke, but... I don't know if I'm, I, I tried to put a picture in zoomed in. There's some kind of detailing around. I think that's really fun. Uh, I think the fit is really fun. Again, you could use you could use a uh, contrast color. This is like kind of the same 
things so one by one color works trended uh, you can use a, a contrast no a main color with the contrasting scraps you could do a lot with it and i think I, don't, I haven't tried this pattern out myself of course but if i read about this um, i think it is super versatile and also really nice for beginners i think then another short sleeve top that grabbed my attention is the ghost horses by caitlin hunter uh, this is i like the fit of it i like how the sleeves fall it's a little bit more cropped but i think maybe with a repeat in the pattern you can make it longer i saw that people who made it uh, made it longer themselves too it is a circular circular yoke sweater uh, with stranded color work but also uh, spin cycle originally but since the nature of spin cycle is that fading that color changing yarn I totally think you could try this out with a fade. Advent fade would be really, really nice, I think. Uh, also scraps, but it will be more colorful, maybe. That is also really cool. Uh, minis, of course, you, you can really do anything with it. You just have to look at what your style is, what you like. That is the most important thing, I think. But yeah, I really like the fit of this one. Um, I am not necessarily a horses person. My mom actually has a horse, so that's fun. But I've never been never been the horse girl. But I think I would even wear this. I, I don't know. I think it's so cool. It's so different. So it is like kind of... I don't know if that's traditional. but uh, And also not standard. You see a lot of color work things. You know probably what I mean. With like the color work yolks and everything. But this is still very different. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to incorporate it in this video. Okay. Then our next sweater. I, I just had to put it in here, okay? If you know me, you know I love dogs and dashes in particular. And I saw this sweater. <laughs> it is the Scrap Yarn Seamless Mini Dashen Dog Sweater. That's a lot to say. By uh, Valia Butengo. It's just too cute. I, c I couldn't help it. So um, it is a dog sweater. It's not a human sweater. But if you have a dashen, Maybe this could be cool. I found it. I was like, I'm going to put it in. She uses all kinds of different yarns, scrap yarns. There's even a cable version option. Version option? Cable version? A cable version. So your dog can match with you if you have a cable sweater. Who doesn't want that? It is made with fingering weight yarn and it just was too cute to not include. But yeah, let's go on to the other patterns. A category that I think is perfect for scrap yarn, especially uh, smaller amounts of scrap yarn, is socks. I think it's perfect uh, with a few grams you can already go a long way it's a smaller project uh, so i included some socks in here the first pair of socks that i wanted to include is the helix helix basic socks by anna Z uh, zuravleva i hope i pronounced that correctly but i thought these were really fun they have a uh, striped pattern so one main color and then a contrast scrap color Maybe if you like, you can make them short, you can make them longer. They are made with a, they are top-down socks with a heel flap and a star-shaped toe. They say, yeah, and fingering sock yarn. But if you have small amounts of scraps laying around, make some socks. Why not? They are in three sizes, uh, which is kind of regular for sock size. This is something I found there. There's not much variation in sock sizes. Um, I found a pattern that I'm now working on, that's in here actually, that has four sizes, but yeah, three sizes in this one. Then a new pattern that is very, very recent is the Herding Cat Socks by Stone Knits. She is well known for her color work socks and uh, I'm not a cat person, but I still thought these were so cute and perfect for some scraps. Uh, for the, the cat part, you know? So I think it would be good to keep a main color. Uh, but for the cats you can use all kinds of yarn as you see here in the examples i think this one has one two three four five six seven six or seven kind of different kinds of yarn and also perfect for those small amounts of scraps so i think it could be really difficult to if you have like 10 maybe not even 10 grams of, of, of yarn laying around what 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 are you going to make with them make these socks i think they are perfect for it these are um let's see oh, i didn't put in if they are top down or not they are top down actually and they um also have a video tutorial for the short rows so that's really cool if that's the first time that you do those yeah so if you are a cat person if you have a lot of small scraps laying around make a pair of these um and yeah it's a very new pattern so you'll be one of the first who makes it so that's cool but yeah i thought these were really cute 
then if you have watched my latest podcast video you have seen these socks because i'm actually working on them these are the easy peasy socks by carolina adamczyk adamczyk uh, krupa knits on instagram actually and i have one here with me these are so so beautiful this is also perfect i think for some scrap yarn because i am now using one color or it's actually a fade yarn but it doesn't really show up in a small amount but i thought later uh, it would be really cool to do some helical kind of knitting um so with two colors or maybe make this one color make this a color this 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 you know so you could do a lot with it it is also a really easy pattern for beginner color work knitters um I'm not sure if it's the easiest if you've never done socks before because you have to undo the color work and socks, you know. But for color work, I really, really, really enjoy it. I have been raving about them already. <laughs> so um, yeah, these are really nice. They are top down. They um, stranded color work. You can really see all the floats in here. I made them on a, a little bit of a bigger needle size, which is perfect. And they're very, very good fitting. They're like super snug on the feet, which I like. Like not tight, but snug, you know? So yeah, these are really, really cool. And I think they, they are also for a free pattern, by the way. So um, free pattern, really cool. You just need to make them. I love them, so make them, okay? <laughs> Other kinds of projects that I also came across were bags. And I found this one bag that is even put as a stash buster. It is again wool and pine, it's the last one, I, I promise you. I, I told you you were going to see them a few times, but they have great, great scrap projects. It is the Whitby bag by wool and pine, perfect for scraps, main color, contrast color, you can put in anything you'd like. I think they said something about how much, um, let's see, how much the, the stripes are, how much color goes in there. So there you can again uh, combine, combine, again combine different weights of yarn. So for fingering held triple, that is possible. You need three yards per stripe. Perfect. Then DK held double, two yards per stripe, and worsted held single. You need one yard per stripe. Perfect for scrap dusting, I think. For a lot of tiny scraps again. Uh, so I think that's great. What I also think is really great is there's no sewing needed, no color work, it is just stripes. You don't need a lining, which I think is great because a lot of bags need some extra extra things. The uh, stripes are made with eye cords and you can definitely choose different kinds of yarn weights in one project. That's something that you don't see a lot. So again, a super, super fun project. Uh, does this also have the video tutorials? I, I think they, they will because they have it in every pattern uh, at the moment. Of course, they have video tutorials. Uh, they have about a professional cast on, which I think is great. How to weave in, uh, how to weave your stash? I don't know what they mean with that. Attach the straps, uh, deal with your ends. Uh, yeah, again, great, great value for what you uh, for what you pay. This is a pay pattern, as all of wool and pines have been. Yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's really fun. What, what else to say? Perfect scrap buster, perfect for fade advents, make it more cohesive. You can really do a lot with this. Then I have two more scrap blanket patterns for you because of course, a lot of people like to make blankets with scraps. I was really looking into a little bit of different kinds of blankets. Um, so I only put two in. I think there are a lot that are quite, um, how do you say that? Quite standard maybe, that you see a lot. So they didn't put them in. I would, they, really wanted them to be a little bit different. The first one uh, is this Lily Scrap Blanket by Jen Peck. It is a chevron kind of pattern. It is also knitted, of course. So uh, I think mostly you see scrap blankets that are crochet. So this is knitted, all of these are knitted. And I really like the colors that she uses, but of course it's all up to your stash, which your blanket would look like. What she also says is that it's more of a recipe or a formula for this blanket than necessarily a pattern. So she explains how you can uh, use different yarn weights and calculate how your blanket will look. So that is really, really fun. It's very customizable. You can do anything with it, with all kinds of uh, yarns, all kinds of colors. I just really liked it. And I also think it's fun because it is knitted, of course. I think most scrap blankets are crochet or a lot of them see a lot of scrap crochet blankets which are also really cool but i thought it would be fun to have something like this knitted then last but not least we have the giant square scrap blanket by laura peters 
And I thought this one was so fun. I I'm gonna say fun like every single pattern because I'll look them up, of course. But I thought this was so different. Better? Different. Um, you can use all your scrap yarn. I think it's fingering weight. Let's see. Fingering weight scraps of any amount. Uh, but she also says in here other yarn weights can be substituted. I think it will be a little bit more difficult to go down yarn size, yarn weight. So you probably, if you want to do heavier weight, you probably have to do like DK on average and then hold fingering double if you'd like or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. You can you can take a look if you find this interesting. But the um, uh, fun thing is that you work as you go and you can just join the ends with a magic knot and just work on. So this, it's like stripey, but also not because the stripes will be different sizes and everything. Uh, what I really like about one of these, that you can see here, is the uh, blocks of blocks, lines of white in between. So it like divides it a little bit. But you can really see that she had more of uh, certain colors. But I still think you can do that. Make, just make the blocks evenly as big on all parts. I thought it was fun because this one was a square and most blankets are rectangular, of course. Yeah, I think it's it's different. It's nice. I think it will be a nice throw size, but you can make it as big as you like. You can just go on endlessly. That'll be really big, but you know what I mean. Uh, you can do a lot with this. Also a free pattern. Great. I think I really like this one. I really like the look of it. If you have some real nice hand dyed yarns maybe lying around that you don't know what to do with, um, or maybe if, if some leftovers from projects. What I really like about blankets is like the sentimental value that it gets. It's the same with like the scrappy uh, sweaters and everything, but I don't know, I feel like uh, a blanket uh, where you just can add some yarn that you use in a project. It'll be really easy to point out, oh, that was from that project and that was from that project. And maybe something fun to, to give to others eventually, like an heirloom, heirloom, is that how you say it? Yeah. So yeah, there are of course many, many more scrap projects around and these are definitely not everything that is around there. So take a look, Ravelry or just Google scrap projects. I hope I could, could give you some inspiration with this video and uh, get you going on some scrap projects because I think it's a shame to have these yarns lying around and nothing being done with them. But be intentional about it because I think it is better to make something that you will definitely use than to make something just to make it, just to get rid of the yarn, then then just let it lay in your stash a little bit longer. But that's my opinion. I would like to know what you do with your scrap yarns. Let me know below which of these patterns you like, you maybe want to make. Uh, as I said, there are so many more. But if you want to see more, let me know. Maybe I could do a part two. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like the video below and follow me here because I'll be doing more pattern videos because you guys like them. I like to make them and I will see you in the next one. Bye creator!